Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up service call for this Perlick beverage cooler and dispenser. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a follow-up service call for this Perlick beverage cooler and dispenser. In our previous visit, we found this machine was completely frozen up and not operating. I actually noticed that this box went down all the way down to 25 degrees, which is way below the set point. And that caused this system to freeze on the water side of it, even though there's glycol in the system. I found that even when this controller was set to off, our condensing unit inside here was still running and it's because we had a faulty controller. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install this kind of type of controller and program it. Temperature in the water reservoir is currently 34 degrees. We're going to start the process by turning everything off. So we're going to turn off the condensing unit and we're going to turn off the pump. Power is off. There's the power symbol. We're going to turn off the controller. This is a direct replacement by Perlick Corporation. So pretty much, even when this was set to off, our condensing unit was still running. So what I did is I literally smacked it and it actually turned off. So what did that tell me? That told me that the relay contacts to send power to the compressor was stuck closed, constantly allowing power to go. So even when the machine wasn't calling, it just kept running, 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 and basically never turned off and things froze over. We're gonna change this controller and we're gonna do the maintenance on this machine. You guys can see, let me grab my light. This is just the cover for the condenser coil and behind there, that coil is pretty dirty. So we're gonna be doing the maintenance. We're really gonna focus on changing this controller. Funny enough, it doesn't come with any instructions, but I do have the manual. We still have power going to this controller, so we're gonna wanna trace out the wiring. And this one just plugs in right here. Just plug it. Put that off to the side. And the power is now gone. I am at a bit of an awkward angle, but let's take off this cover here and get to the electrical. Kind of tucks in under this plate, but I should be able to get it. All right, here is our controller. I'm gonna be replacing that. Not too many wires here. I'm gonna show you a diagram up here. So on this side, between four and five, these two wires is basically the, the contacts that sends power to the compressor. Then these two right here is your power supply and these two little wires is there's a sensor that is submerged in this tank here there's glycol inside of it watch my previous video to get more of an idea of what exactly i'm working on and that's that and one thing i would like to change is this thing is all cracked up maybe change that stake on right there and this wire is not even pushed in all the way i don't know why it keeps getting loose anyways we're gonna make sure we get everything right. You do want these insulated because if these two touch, it's like basically you're closing the contact. So let's see how to remove this thing. There's like a little bracket on the side. Okay, that's holding this. Looks like we got some little clips here. We can like kind of push it and we'll be able to move it. This is larger than the back, so this must come out this way. But this piece is gonna be in my way. Let me see, is that just like a plug-in? There a clip on there that's on the top piece yeah that's just like a little plug-in oh just like that you see okay let's just put that here for now let's see if I could press this try to slide this thing out press with two fingers maybe try to pull this out a one side looks like it came loose a little. How about this side? Let's 
gotta be just that little clip that's holding it. Come on. Alright. Looks like this is gonna be our struggle. <laughs> Hardest part of the job is getting this thing out of here. Put a good pressure on it. Hm. All right, well, we'll be struggling this. You already know. 2,000 years later. 2,000 years later. I'll press this with a screwdriver. Little clip. Pull. Oh, right there. I'm gonna do the same on this one. Start on that clip. One piece of that bracket just, oh, it came right off. That's why. And that fell all the way down there. So this actually gets mounted. Mmm, okay. So you would pretty much mount this. Oh, it slides. Saw that? Slide. Press down this little button here. And it slides. So you just gotta find out where you want it and then it'll fit. All right, let me go find that piece. And of course, it fell inside here. But either way, I do need to get in there. So, take off this cover. And it is somewhere in here. Okay, I found it. And we're pretty much just gonna slide this piece in. Okay, that's how it works. But what we gotta do is actually press that, slide it off. So we gotta push it in first and then put the clips that will hold it together. There's, there's two black wires. So I made a little marking with a marker on which is which. So eight is black. White, seven. Red is five. And then this other black is four that I didn't mark. Yeah, those, those wires are a bit crispy. This piece, so then what we're gonna do is slide this in here now. All right, put it in the right way. Let me attach this piece here for the sensor. All right, that's holding push that in right and then we're gonna slide on these clips come on should we put it in the right way let's slide on these clips and that's what's gonna hold it oh awesome pretty simple pretty simple this one is gonna go this way Slide that in. See that clip? Let's slide it in. Right there. And it's mounted. That is awesome. Now we're just gonna go wire for wire in the same orientation that it was previously wired. It's the black with the marking. White, so that was eight, and then seven was this white one. So it's hot and neutral most likely, black and white. And then this is going to go in this orientation, right? Red to five and black to four line. But I don't like this right here. Have a new pack of solderless connectors that are insulated and what we're gonna do is fix these up this one is like darkened i don't like the color on it right here 
and this one already got so dry it already broke off and I'm gonna clear this one up too so let's see do we have slack on the wire yes we do I'm gonna cut it off strip it back Shift it back. I'm gonna put on there and I'm gonna crimp it. Through. Have it hold in place for a sec. And I'm, just, I'm just gonna squeeze it here like this for now. So it holds and I have a crimping tool on my I have a crimping tool on my lines lens. So we're gonna take that, get it on there, and squeeze. Got a nice connection. You can see where it's crimped. Pull on it, you know you're good, and connect it. I'm just gonna follow the same process for the other ones. But we're gonna be good to go. All right, everything looks nice and clean. so much better everything else looks like it's in good shape nothing corroded this and that because some of them really look bad if you look inside of them and the insulations already started melting off but anyways everything looks nice and clean here I wiped everything off as far as electrical this part is complete Everything's closed up, but there is a lot of dirt on this piece. I really don't like the look of that. Let's let's clean this up a little bit and make things a little bit more presentable on the outside, even though it doesn't truly affect it. You always gotta take pride in your work and it doesn't hurt to do the right thing. And trust me, people notice and it will pay off later. And at the end of the day, this is also another nice thing for customers to see because you do get what you pay for all right it's already looking a lot better what we really need to clean is this condenser coil yeah I don't think that's such a good thing the cover is looking nice and clean coil is cleaned up we'll move this out the way pull this back we're gonna clean all this up all right really pulling this whole thing apart to properly clean it People don't realize how much effort it goes into doing things like this. Well, this is probably the best bet to do it. Is take this apart, really clean this thing up. All right, guys, I'm loving it. Everything's looking nice compared to what's over there. All those stains. That right there. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, guys, everything is looking nice and clean. Finally. That's great the inside and the outside let's go ahead and start this thing and set the temperature okay I plugged it back in power is off let's just put the pump on that started condensing in it turn that on and let's program it right here is the power button so it's displaying the temperature of the box 47 degrees and it is showing a snowflake show saying it's cooling condensing unit just started let's see uh we're gonna click set to see the set temperature if we press it we'll see what it's set to set to 30. so looks like this is already programmed to work with this machine this is a direct replacement they do want it at 30 degrees we are moving um, this water in this tank but there's glycol in it it's anti-freeze so it shouldn't freeze I do have the manual pulled up here so I will show you guys everything here so you guys can see for yourself shows the wiring diagram stuff like that and just a couple of things about installation and programming but the recommended temperature is 30 degrees 
Water does freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but there is glycol in the system, which is anti-freeze to, uh, to eliminate that from happening. It shouldn't freeze. It froze before because it just kept running below, and yeah, it did freeze. But we should be good now. So 30 degrees is what they recommend, the four degree differential. But I noticed that these people like it a little bit warmer just to prevent any issues from happening. So they would set it at like 33 degrees. That's totally fine because the beer that is connected to this beer tap system is actually, let me see, is it, is it unlocked? Yeah. See if I can open this up. It's actually inside a walk-in freezer. So it's already cold and this just helps the efficiency with it. That's what it seems like. Hold down set and then you'll be able to switch it. Set again and it's gonna lock that in. So now showing 47 in the box. Click set again and you see it, it's set to 33 degrees to shut off. We are currently at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures are coming down. That's a beautiful thing. And we're pretty much just gonna wait and make sure that this condensing unit actually stops once it reaches temperature. But we're gonna wrap it up from here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.